So, so we've got niche, we've got metrics, we've got language. So that's, uh, perhaps that covers somewhat of the lead gen side of reuniting our, our sales here, Aaron. Is there anything else? Is there any other major categories of, I guess, your sales processes as well or what you teach over at uh, Predictable Revenue? Is there anything else that needs to come after we perhaps increase the flow of our leads to reignite sales growth? Well, I think I just re reemphasize. Um, so there's two, two major funnels, right? There's the inbound funnel, um, but you might call it three. So let's call it like partners. Uh, so inbound funnel, which would be like marketing generated typically, outbound funnel, outbound prospecting. And then let's just call it word of mouth, which would be like maybe partners or customer referrals. And at least on the inbound side and outbound side, what often cut, uh, teams don't do is really kind of drill into the, the specific types of campaigns and techniques that are working. There's always this kind of like, we just want more meetings in marketing or like we want more leads and marketing tries to get more leads and you know webinar leads are vastly different than um paid leads pay, uh, which are vastly different than direct search leads and it's just being a little bit more insightful about the types of pro of activities and campaigns that are generating quality leads which really means quality meetings for salespeople. so taking the time to really kind of dig into that and not just bluntly say more meetings okay of what type what kind of company and how to generate them so obviously outbound prospecting is our specialty. I think same thing, which is just really the biggest waste of time in outbound is targeting companies that aren't a fit just because they have a big name or because people aren't really being specific enough. Same thing with inbound. So it's just being sp more specific. What kinds of meetings would you want with what kinds of companies that are more likely to be a good fit and what uh, activities or campaigns have helped create those? I know the answer to this question is going to be uh, probably uh, both or it depends, but should the focus now, again, as we go in, as, as hopefully pandemic kind of like eases down, the market starts to open up, the cash starts flowing, that's perhaps been, it's there, but it's been held up over the past 12 months or 18 months or so. Should we be simplifying all our processes and funnels or should we be experimenting and getting more complex with them? And again, I know the answer is it, it, it depends, but if you had to kind of push one way or the other, which would it be? Yeah, uh, you know, experimentation is generally, I, mean, I do think it, it's hard because some people have, they build out so much like process and playbook that's overwhelming for salespeople. It's, it's this never ending, impossible line to balance between enough to be useful, but not too much to be confusing. Um, but on the flip side, yeah, same thing. We're just, we're never experimenting enough with the lead gen side, with this outbound inbound messages, the demos. It's, it because I think it takes more energy than we realize to run actual experiments. Sure. It takes more energy to say, all right, if we're going to, and it feels risky, right? Hey, we're going to run 10 demos this way. And then we're going to do 10 demos this other way and kind of measure that somehow. Um, it sounds okay. Yeah, that makes sense. But to actually go in and do it and like get people to do it that way, it just, it's more work than we realize. So I think what I recommend typically is, um, especially on like the outbound prospecting side, if you just kind of expect your team to, to run experiments and try stuff, I mean, they will, but you won't learn as much because a lot of what they try, they don't write down, they don't remember. Um, you just lose the learnings. You just kind of, like, we've been doing this for six months. Like, what did we try? So I, you should centralize, some way to centralize like your testing approaches, right? And saying whether it's on outbound or in your sales process, say, look, as a team, let's decide on a handful of things we want to test and how we're going to do that and not to be overly optimistic on how many tests we can do. Um, it might be one a week, it might be X. And let's kind of decide how we can do these, like I said, a bit more of the scientific method where we kind of have a hypothesis and then we'd run it for a week, two weeks, a month, whatever that time is, and then have a way to kind of analyze at the end and capture that so we can, um, you know, uh, so, we're, so we're not just trying stuff and whether it works or not, we're not really sure what worked it in and what we tried before. So I know we did that at our company. Uh, so at predictablerevenue.com, we've got about 60 something people. And there a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago, there's just a lot of people trying stuff. Uh, and, and we weren't really sure what worked or didn't. We created something called Outbound Labs internally, which is really more like a centralized way of saying, here's experiments we'll run. Here's like a process to do it and try to document the learnings from them. And it was much more uh, impactful that way.
Yeah, there, I, I somewhat selfishly asked that question as well, Aaron. Of uh, last year, we had uh, inbound leads for our training product program coming in from uh, ads in webinars. Uh, sorry, ads in podcasts. Uh, a webinar that we did regularly that we kind of followed via kind of email sequences. Uh, what else did we do uh, on the blog? Getting people to sign into the newsletter. And to reemphasize the point they made earlier on. The only leads that really converted to any great extent was the webinar leads. That was the only thing that, in hindsight, after processing the data, that's the only thing that really mattered. So our email list is, say, 110,000 people now, and we barely ever email it because, yeah, it's great to keep in touch with the audience and perhaps they'll become buyers over the longer term. But just focusing on the webinar, completely, it, well, we doubled, doubled our, we more than doubled our revenue last year. We're doing multiple kind of seven figures in revenue now, all because of just this one webinar funnel and just getting uh, simplifying, but simplifying on the back of data. And my background is the, the audience will know I'm a published scientist. I've got a, a kind of paper in the uh, the Journal of Computational Chemistry. So I'm all about the numbers. I, I I appreciate it, the scientific method, doubling down on it. But I thought I was doing all this, as you alluded to. I thought I was measuring things. But it was only when I spent a total, uh, a full week off and collated all the data that I realized that one lead was worth a thousand, literally one webinar lead was probably worth a couple of hundred uh, newsletter leads and, and other inbound marketing leads. And that, that made a massive difference to our business. And I'm sure that's something that sales leadership can focus on as well. Yeah, it's a perfect example. All right. So just digging, doing that work to be more insightful about the types of leads you want, what actually closes and so on, because a lead is not a lead is not a lead.